I doubt we'll see like digital currency, you know, beat fiat in our lifetimes. Mm. Yeah, like it's about as it's about as likely as you know, uh, going full anarcho-capitalist within the next seventy years. Like, yeah, no, it's probably just not gonna happen. No, that's the kind of philosophy and you know societal system, in like a total paradigm shift. That doesn't happen, you know, overnight. Yeah. Unless something yeah. unless something really, really crazy happens, like a world financial meltdown or something that totally throws everything into flex, then you well, know, yeah, who knows actually, what'll happen. I actually forgot about that, because you know, I think that is a lot closer than a lot of people think. Cause I I have this I kinda have this uh hypothesis that the Great Depression never ended. And uh cause you know, every time, ever since the Great Depression, every time there's been a recession, it, the central bank has, the Fed has just uh, tried to smooth it out by pumping, like, tons of money into the system. So uh, there was never any, like, real recovery after the Great Depression. Um, because everybody says it ended at World War II, but that's because uh, the entire economy shifted to war production. Yeah. And the government, you know, basically inflated the currency like crazy making tanks and stuff um and then ever since then you know about every you know 15 to 20 years there's been a recession and the government has just like inflated their way out of it so the past what is it like 80 years has been uh just one giant bubble and um so and you know the traditional fed policies aren't working anymore like um QE was like a very like extremely controversial and like radical monitor, uh, monetary policy, mm-hmm. and they did it because uh, because zero percent interest rates just weren't working anymore. Because that's what they normally use, right, to prop yeah, up the economy. They, yeah, they normally just um, they normally just buy up a bunch of bonds. They normally just buy up a bunch of government bonds. Um, and that lowers interest rates and people and it injects more money into the economy. But that didn't work. People, you know, they were buying up bonds and interest rates were at zero, but banks still weren't lending out money. So then they they decided to buy government bonds in addition to that, buy private bonds from the you know, the banks themselves. So directly give cash to the banks. That's what QE is. And that's not working or it's starting to work now because the Dow's above seventeen thousand. So are those like two different work. types of inflation? Like they've invented a new type of inflation in addition to the type that they used to use in the twentieth century, and now they're doing yeah, both. Like, what they would do is that they would lower the interest rates to the Fed would lower its interest rate to zero um, on the the accounts that the individual banks had with the Fed, so the so the banks weren't getting anything on their deposits, and so they would make it'd be more profitable to lend more money out instead of uh, keep it in their deposit account with the with the Fed. And um, they did that, and they would uh, they'd give short term loans to banks to keep them solvent. Uh, that was a huge source of the credit expansion, the Great Depression. Uh, banks, you know, were having a hard time redeeming their uh, their gold certificates. And so, uh, um, you know, the Fed just like gave them like short term credit to shore up their insolvency. And then they would, um, they would buy, they would buy uh, treasury bonds on the secondary market, uh, uh, from the public and, and that would, uh, lower the interest rate of treasury bonds, uh, which would encourage, you know, uh, more people to sell and then they could use, you know, use that, give that to the banks to lend it out. Uh, but then like the, like what they're doing now with QE is they're essentially just printing money and handing it to the banks because before they would, you, they would buy government bonds on the secondary market. And that was kind of like a roundabout way to inflate. Um, mm. but now they're just like, they're buying bonds from private banks and they're literally creating money just out of thin air and just handing it to the banks to increase their, their reserves. Wow. And that's, you know, that's worked so far because the Dow is, you know, 
at unprecedented highs right now. Yeah, so if you got money in the stock market, then you're doing well in most cases. Yeah. But most of the country uh, is still, you know, feeling the effects of the recession um, that started in 2008. Like you mentioned that you don't think the Great Depression ever ended, uh, you know, in the in the 20th century. But like that, that's pretty controversial, and and you can make the case for that. But like, I, I would hope that at least you know most of the country would agree that the recession that start the Great Recession as they call it that started in 2008 is definitely like for sure not over. Like that's still, <laughs> you know. Oh yeah. The economic landscape has fundamentally shifted, and um, the government has has a greater you know influence on this. The banks still have all of their influence on the economy. You know they're still too big to fail, and um, you know, I mean, and, and well, I think most I've, of the country is is treading water basically. I personally think the the Federal Reserve is losing their control over the economy, and that's why. Um, you know, and that's why a big crash is, you know, maybe within the next, you know, 20 or 30 years because uh, the the Fed has to, you know, rely on this crazy policy of just like literally, you know, printing money and handing it to banks for free just to get the stock market up. Mm. Uh, and uh, I actually, I looked up quantitative easing just on Investopedia just now and what they, what they would do previously before quantitative what they do when they're not when they're expanding the monetary supply without quantitative easing is, like I said, they bought securities, uh, government government bonds from the secondary market, um, but that was from individuals. So they would just like they would give money to individuals, which they would then put into the stock market. Uh, but now they're giving money to banks, so banks can loan it out to you know everybody. Mm -hmm. Uh, and to put it, it like it increases the money supply much faster than just buying uh, government bonds from individuals. That's that's the difference. And so all these banks are just sitting on these gigantic piles of cash, and you know the government is trying to encourage them to lend it out, but the banks don't want to do anything that they absolutely don't have to yeah. because they are profit driven. They want to keep yeah, that, that was, money. That was one of the big problems with the bank bailouts, right? Like the the federal government. Gave the banks, you know, hundreds of trillions of dollars, and with the, um, you know, on the expectation that they would loan it out and stimulate spending, but then they just sat on it because they, like, they didn't want to, you know, fail again.